Ed, to better understand the brain, it's interesting to map it, and you've found very smart and clever ways to expand space and, and things like that. But if we reverse the question, uh, can AI help us better understand the brain, which we really don't yet? That's for you, Ed. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, AI and, and machine learning and, and computer science in general is very powerful. And uh, many people are using AI and machine learning to analyze the images of the brain that we and many other people are trying to acquire. Uh, these image data sets are enormous. And so turning the raw images into network diagrams uh, uh, benefits greatly from AI and machine learning. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You know, people looking at behavior, people looking at dynamics of the brain, uh, AI and machine learning are having impact in all those areas. Now, you talked about very tangible things like worms and fish and uh, using parts of their brains to do the experiments you do. And uh, Matthew took us to this place of, uh, you know, gradual substitution and, uh, and uh, mind uh, uploading. So a question for both of you. Uh, if there is a spectrum from 0 to 100, where 0 is no AI, and 100 is absolute mimicking of the human brain, where on that spectrum are we today? Matthew first. Well, I think we're close to zero. Okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Ed? Uh, yeah, I, I have to concur. I think the brain is so full of mystery and, and so much roiling activity below the, below the hood that we, we don't understand. Ed, there is a lot of discussion yeah, about directly connecting the human mind with machines, right? Anything from companies funded by Elon Musk to uh, academic research, et cetera. What's your take on that? That's for you, Ed. Oh, connecting brains to machines? Yeah. Well, hundreds of thousands of people already have neural implants for uh, cochlear implants for people suffering from deafness or um, deep brain stimulators for helping people with Parkinson's disease or other movement disorders. So uh, this has been going on since the, you know, since in, in earnest since the mid 1980s, frankly. Um, I think there's clear benefit to, to many patients. And as people make better and better maps of the brain, hopefully we can help more and more people uh, who are suffering from different conditions from epilepsy to Alzheimer's and beyond. Matthew, when we think of your three models, mind uploading, coding the brain mimicking algorithms or gradual substitution, what happens to human consciousness in those three models? So the assumption there is that human consciousness will, be, it will continue, but it doesn't have to. So we actually don't know. So there are actually there are three possibilities when you do, say, for example, gradual substitution. One possibility is, as you do it, uh, consciousness completely disappears. Another possibility is that it dims, okay? And then the third possibility is that consciousness is maintained. Now, the supposition here is that, so the gradual substitution is something like this. So we, you know, you come in, you go into the clinic. So, you know, we take one of these artificial neurons, maybe you have Alzheimer's. So we take the, you know, the bad cell, the bad brain cell, and replace it with a good cell. And then you go back home and you're interacting and it seems like you have consciousness, right? Just one. Now we, you know, a couple, couple weeks later, you go into, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're not feeling well, you go into the clinic and you say, doctor, I'm not feeling well. So they say, they take out a couple more cells, right? And again, you go home and you're, you know, talking to your wife and, you know, your kids and so on and so forth. And it appears that you still have consciousness. Now the, the idea, the hypothesis is that, well, at some point, if you continue to be able to act, right, and it's, you're, you're sort of, uh, either you're faking it because all of a sudden consciousness disappeared, or it dimmed, right? Like somehow you say, oh, I feel pain, but you don't really feel anything, or you have, you know, full consciousness. And it seems like uh, the, the last option is more plausible than the other two through gradual substitution, but that's an unknown. So. Okay, uh, I think that you're taking us to a space there that is going to provoke a lot of thinking in all of us in the, in the, <laughs> next, in the next weeks and months. Matthew, thanks for your talk. Ed, thanks for being with us. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.